Now, what I wanted to talk about today was the effect of um, the grip and the effect that it has on the backswing position. So this has come to light again, um, where some people have sent the swing into the channel, right? Specifically, there was a couple of individuals that were struggling with getting across the line, which means the shaft angles too vertically placed at the top of the backswing position. Now, I wouldn't necessarily suggest this is a huge problem because to be honest, like I always talk about, is that it's more important that the shaft angle would fall on plane on the downswing and down in towards pre-impact as well. But what we are gonna talk about is whether if you grip the club, should we say weaker, or if you grip the club stronger, the effect that that happens in the golf swing. So what we'll do is we'll talk about what would happen in an orthodox grip first and foremost. Now an orthodox grip would mean that you're kind of gripping the club in the fingers on the left hand and the heel pad sitting directly on top, right? This would mean that if you look at it from a face on perspective, about three knuckles would be showing on the left hand. The right hand then, the whole purpose of this is that you would you know, interlock, overlap, do whatever with the right hand, but it should act as a supporting feature towards the club, which means that as I kind of get myself set up into this address position, you can see the way my right forearm or my right arm is bent. And if I get in my setup position, the way you can see my left forearm and my right forearm is more underneath. So that would be perceived to be what's known as a more kind of orthodox neutral grip position. Now, what would happen from here is that as we start to take the club back, the first move is that you just take the club back nice and straight. And then to get the club to, in theory, go on plane at the top, you would be rotating your left forearm up to the top of the backswing, which then means, again, this sort of position here would mean that the shaft is on plane. That's all that's happening. Now, the right arm is just acting, as I said, as a supporting to the fact that the left arm is rotating. And if you like, basically the right forearm or your right arm is just helping you create leverage at the top of the backswing. So it basically means that the right arm is just pushing the club up onto whatever sort of left arm plane that you want to work on. Now, the point is, is that if you grip the club, should we say orthodox, then the right wrist would have an element of hinge in the setup position, which means as you swing up to the top and you rotate your left forearm, then basically the shaft angle would just fall onto a parallel angle of the back of the right wrist. So therefore you wouldn't have to think about it too much. So again, if I grip the club orthodox, I take the club back, as I start to rotate my left forearm, the shaft would fall onto plane and the back of my right wrist is parallel towards the shaft angle. That's, you know, happy days, that's maybe a very textbook orthodox position that you'd wanna be in. Now the complication is, let's say this time, I grip the club weaker in my right hand, which means my right hand is more rotated on top of the club. So it is now, as you can see from my setup position, you can see that my right forearm is on the same plane as my left forearm, so it's no longer located underneath, and it's more on top. Now again, if I swing this club back, the first move exactly the same, as I start to swing up towards the top, as I rotate my left forearm, you can see the way the shaft now is appearing to be more vertically placed. But again, it's still parallel towards the back of my right wrist which is why as you swing up, the club would eventually start to travel more across the line because it's still parallel to the back of my right wrist functionality. Now, the complication that happens is that if you grip the club the way you do with the right hand being relatively what's known as weak or rotated on top, and you start to take the club back, and then you start to fight the natural functionality of the right arm and you try and create more rotation going back, then although this would visually look better, the problem that we have from here is that my left wrist will now start to create too much extension, so too much of this motion here. Now the problem is from this position, is although it visually look better for our golfer who doesn't like it looking across the line, is that the left wrist and this functionality means the club face now is gonna to be too open. So therefore, as you're gonna come down, you're gonna to struggle to be able to get towards impact without it being too flippy. So my suggestion is, is that if you're somebody who's struggling with an across the line movement, I would double check your grip. And then the whole point is, is that if you get your grip correctly with the right hand, then you should find that the shaft angle should fall parallel towards the original position of the wrist. It's unlikely that you're gonna be going in this sort of manner as you're swinging back, unless there is a problem with the grip in the original position. However, let's say you thought your grip was okay and you're still struggling, then a nice little exercise would be just to swing your right hand solely up to the top. And you can see the way naturally your right arm would sit like so, and then the shaft angle would just be parallel towards that right wrist. If you feel like you're swinging up and for some reason you're going into this sort of movement, which would mean there's a lack of external shoulder rotation at the top, then you can just work on this movement until you can start to get the shaft 
and the right arm co acting correctly so you know the shaft can just sit parallel and towards this sort of position. So the likelihood is that if you're swinging across the line, I would double check the grip. If you then for think it's not a grip fault and you feel like you are setting up in this sort of manner and you're still finding yourself swinging across the line, then what I'd start to do is just do some exercises where as you swing the right arm solely up towards the top, then basically you should just get your right back of your right hand parallel towards the angle in which you want it to be. So instead of being in this sort of way, you can start to be this way. What you'd find is that if you are this way, all you're going to be doing is technically it, it externally rotating the right shoulder more to the point where you can get the right arm more parallelly placed towards your intended shaft angle. Now, the last point would be, well, what happens if you grip the club much stronger? Which would mean that you're gripping it in the fingers and the left hand is sitting much more on top. So the back of my uh, left wrist is now facing entirely towards the camera. Well, what this means is that in theory, you've already rotated your left forearm. So this would mean then from this sort of position, if you are somebody who grips the club a lot stronger, the right hand would still sit underneath. But now there would be no need to create any more rotation around this left arm. You would naturally just feel like you're picking the right arm up. And as long as your right arm is in good function, then again, you would start to see the way the shaft would be in the intended position. So let's say on plane. I think it's important to understand, right? that there is a premise for having an orthodox grip because therefore you can be more relatable to generic video content. So if you grip the club orthodox and then somebody suggests a feeling where you can do X, Y, Z, then it can become relatable. But if you're somebody who has got a weaker grip, then you just need to be careful if you're trying to conform towards normality. And if you're somebody who has a weaker grip and the shaft is more vertically placed, then it's probably more logical to try and change the grip. Again, if you're somebody who is stronger in the forearm position, which means stronger in the grip, and again, you're trying to create a rotation, then you're going to have a problem because there's no need for you to do it. So hopefully this video helps. Hopefully it offers advice as to, you know, if you grip the club a certain way, what your feelings should be in the backswing. It also offers a bit of advice as to the whole performance of the right arm independently on its own is it's trying to act as a lever towards the left arm and that the back of the right, the back of the right wrist should be parallel towards the shaft angle as your indication as to whether you're on plane. Hopefully the video helps, right? It's absolutely free to do this, but again, what I mentioned at the beginning, what prompted this topic of discussion is because people send in swings towards the channel. You can do so, right? The links are in the description below. It's absolutely free to do so. Every kind of fortnight, I'll kind of do an analysis of the swings that are sent in and then create video content to help the people around it as well. Happy to help you guys out. What is also absolutely free is to press that subscribe button, press the little bell icon as well. You'll receive notifications every time a new video comes out. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Always appreciate a thumbs up as well. I'll catch up with you again soon.